This story is intended for audiences high school age and older. It contains a little bit of profanity, but nothing beyond what's appropriate for a PG-13 rated movie. The World of OK. So I went to the doctor for one thing, and instead she found cancer. Cancer is a weird, big, scary word. It makes other people feel weird when you say it, which I really try not to take personally since it used to make me feel weird too. I received my diagnosis in a parking lot. After a month or so of mostly painful tests and interminable waiting periods, my doctor called me at work on a Friday morning, on Halloween actually, and asked if now was a good time to discuss my biopsy results. Was it a good time? Not really. I was preparing for my company's annual exhibition at an international trade show and had, no exaggeration, 200 tasks I needed to get done before the end of the day, so I didn't really have time for this call. And also, I decided I didn't have cancer. On Tuesday, I'd had a biopsy at the hospital. On Wednesday, I was certain that the results were bad, that I was definitely sick, that my life as I knew it was over. But by Thursday, I'd come to my senses. Of course, I didn't have cancer. Cancer was big and scary. I was only 32, and I was healthy, mostly. Cancer was something that happened to other people. Not bad people, just other people. People who weren't me. When I'd woken up on this Friday, I was no longer stressing about test results. I was stressing about how much I needed to get done between now and next week and how I'd almost definitely be at the office all weekend again. So was now a good time to move past this? Sure, you bet. I stood up cell phone pressed to my ear and walked through the office out to the small parking lot behind our building. My office was an open workspace. There were no doors aside from the one to the bathroom, so if ever you wanted privacy, you had to go outside. Then my doctor asked me if I was driving, and I knew. I just knew. And she confirmed it when she told me that the three thyroid nodules that were biopsied all tested positive for papillary thyroid cancer. And then she told me the four things that nearly every doctor will tell you about papillary thyroid cancer. One, it's the most common type of thyroid cancer. Two, it's considered good cancer because it's rare that it metastasizes. So three, it can usually be treated entirely with surgery. And four, it's unlikely to recur. So, okay, good cancer is bullshit and no one should say it ever unless that person has cancer and they've decided that it's good. I like my doctor a lot, but that phrase is bullshit. That didn't totally register at the time because in the ear I was holding my phone up to, I was hearing a lot of really specific medical information and in my other ear I heard mostly white noise. It wasn't until later when I remembered her using the word good that I got angry at how absurd it was. Good would have been no cancer. Good would have been continuing to walk around like the totally healthy 32-year-old I thought I was. Nothing 
about this is good. Some things are okay and some things are not okay. This is the world of okay. In the first six months after my diagnosis, I probably said okay more than I'd said it in my entire life up to that point. How are you doing? Okay. I don't feel okay. Okay, what do we do now? When my oncologist reviewed my full pathology report with me post-op, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so those four things they say about papillary thyroid cancer, they don't apply to me. I have a variant on the most common type that is rare and aggressive. It did metastasize through my entire thyroid bed into 26 lymph nodes and onto my right vocal cord. Because it was so advanced, I required an additional treatment after surgery, something called radioactive iodine ablation. Essentially, you swallow a pill full of radiation and it kills the remaining disease. It also makes you quite sick but it's a small price to pay if it works. Mine didn't work, and my cancer recurred 10 months after my first surgery. It was treated with more radiation and more surgery. Okay, so I have a treatable disease and it still sucks. I was speaking with a friend shortly after my diagnosis about how we don't really talk about treatable diseases and cancer is such a big, scary word because most people still think of it as terminal. And for a lot of people, it is. And there's a degree of luck that doesn't go unnoticed by me, that mine is treatable. but. I think when people say you're lucky, they haven't played that statement out to its full conclusion. Because what they mean is you're lucky you're not going to die. It's a mindfuck of epic proportions to go from the headspace of totally healthy to being made to feel lucky that you're not going to die. And I presume that's probably true at any age, but at 32, it felt particularly surreal. I hate that I was diagnosed with cancer at 32. Cancer runs in my family, which was one of the red flags that led my doctor to being so aggressive in running tests. But I hate that I'm the youngest to be afflicted by about 20 years. And treatment is not without consequence. Nothing is as bad as death, obviously, but it's hard to have macro perspective on this when you're in it. I still have pain from my two surgeries every day. It's manageable pain, but I feel it from the moment I wake up till the moment I go to sleep. And that's not all. Okay, so I wasn't sick and now I am. If your thyroid works, you're likely not even aware of it or what it does. But if it doesn't, it can destroy your life. Thyroid dysfunction has physical and psychological symptoms. So remind me how all of this is good again. When you have thyroid cancer, they treat it by removing your thyroid. Fortunately, you can take a pill that tricks your body into thinking you still have a thyroid, so it'll behave accordingly. But your body's not easily fooled. Hypothyroidism occurs when your body doesn't get enough of the synthetic thyroid hormone, and symptoms include fatigue, depression, lethargy, brain fog, 
muscle pain, hair loss, weight gain, insomnia, etc. And hyperthyroidism occurs when your body gets more of the hormone than it can process. And those symptoms include irritability, anxiety, heart palpitations, tremors, depression, fatigue, night sweats, insomnia, etc. Those overlapping symptoms are confusing and not that helpful when you're trying to figure out if you're okay. And if you thought the emotional toll of a cancer diagnosis was extreme, you can imagine the impact that a new permanent hormone imbalance adds to the mix. Okay, so I'm not really me anymore. That's a little melodramatic, but I just don't feel like myself. It's maybe not permanent or requires an even longer adjustment period to the new me. The new normal is a phrase that's used ad nauseum in thyroid cancer literature, but I have no control over how long this adjustment period lasts. I keep imagining some time when this is over and I can sum it all up and talk about what it was, but it's not over and it might never be. Also, it still feels like this is happening to someone else because once you're sick, you grow a patient self. Your patient self is mostly the same as your regular self, but it goes to the hospital a lot. It meets with doctors constantly. It gets stuck with needles all the time. And it generally experiences a life that your regular self never imagined and still sometimes can't. Okay, so now I live with cancer. When I was in pre-op for my last surgery, my doctor told my mom that I probably wasn't going to die from this disease, and I saw her stomach drop. He told me the same thing a couple months earlier when we were discussing the plan for this latest operation, but I hadn't told her. I hadn't told anyone. And the truth is, I really probably am not going to die from this disease. But in 15 months, I went from this is good and definitely, totally, 100% treatable to I'm probably not going to die from it. The probably is because I'm young and because it recurred so quickly and because I have nodules present that have some characteristics of malignancy. They're really tiny and they've been mostly stable for the past nine months. We watch them closely and it's unlikely that they'll need to be dealt with for a few years at least. But since that morning in October three years ago when my doctor called me, I've yet to be able to say I had cancer. I have cancer. It's changed my life and it's changed me. Okay, so did you know you can buy body parts on the internet? I mean, of course, right? You can buy anything on the internet. For Hanukkah, in the year between my first and second surgeries, I bought myself a new thyroid on Etsy. It's sterling silver and it doesn't do any of the things my old thyroid did. But I can see it when I wear it. It falls just a few inches below my scar and it reminds me that I'm stronger than I ever thought I could be and that, you know, I'm okay. <laughs>